Hi, Dr. Jay. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, so there are some questions that I wanted to ask you about region of life. And also, can you please tell me that what is your science story? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I actually, I started out, I wanted to be an environmental um, studies major. And it was just, you know, it was a sprinkling of economics and social science and politics and biology and all the things that go into how do people interact with the environment. <clears throat> and I just felt like it was a very <clears throat> diluted, um, you know, diffuse sort of study because you were not really an expert in any of those things. Yeah. And I guess of all of the ones that seemed the most interesting to me was the, the biological science aspect. And so I became a biology major. And then that, you know, that kind of, as soon as you start studying biology, there's all these things, you know, there's ecology and organismal biology, and this sort of internal organs level biology that doctors need to know, cell biology, microbiology, virology. Biology. And you, you see all these things and you go, but wait, there's the, the core question is, why is there any life at all, right? And where does it come from? And this is a study that has all of these features, except for that key thing, right? And uh, so that was always sort of stuck in the back of my mind. But I, I went and got a job after I graduated working in a protein chemistry lab. And, you know, that, that was what science was for me at that point, was being a lab technician. And I went to the library just to photocopy something. And I just saw something out of the corner of my eye. It was a journal on a shelf, and I pulled it off and started reading it while I was there. And it, it happened to be an article about the origin of life. And the title was very engaging. I was like, God, does that even mean? And I sat there and read it, and I was like, huh, you know, people get paid to do this? This is... This is interesting, you know, and I didn't think about it much for a while after that till I went for a job interview at NASA, and it was to do autopsies on mice that had gone up on the space shuttle, and, and I didn't really want to kill lots of mice. That was never the kind of science I wanted to do, but I started talking with the guy who was interviewing me, and I said, you know, I didn't even know NASA did life science sort of stuff, and you know, I thought it was all building rockets, and he was like, oh, goes, yeah, we do all kinds of stuff. He said, but the people doing the really freaky stuff are in San Diego. And, you know, as soon as somebody says the really freaky stuff, you're like, what is that? <laughs> and it, it turned out to be one of the people who had written this article I read. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe I should go back to graduate school and see if I can study this. And, and I did. And um, that's how I got here. Um, that was what, almost... That was 25 years ago, I guess. So, um, yeah, it was a good decision for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and of course, I ended up becoming a chemist, so that's, which is also a lot of fun. Being a chemist is one of the most fun things you can do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I must say that that is the more, one of the most fascinating science stories that I've ever heard. Oh, <laughs> ah, thank you. I, I opened. Here, people say about, about a bunch of few people who actually think about this kind of stuff. That yep. how did life start? You know, it's such a big question in itself that you can spend your whole life and still, you know, wonder that what is that mystery is all about. So, Dr. Jim, can you please tell me that how, as a chemist, you're trying to answer the region of life question? Um, so, <clears throat> I guess there's there's a number of related questions. Um, one is, you know, what, what kinds of chemicals do we think the environment can make? And then, you know, how do they react in the environment and how do they become more complex in the environment? <clears throat> and so that's, that's the kind of range of things is simulating environments, seeing what comes out, what kind of chemicals come out of them, um, simulating how those, those chemicals behave in different types of environments. Um, and, and, you know, a big part of that turns out to be that just, just trying to identify what the chemicals actually are yeah. is rather complicated because there can be millions of different things, right? And so developing the techniques to even measure those things is a lot of the job. And, uh, I was actually going through your papers and I saw the title that called Region of Life. And I was wondering mm -hmm. that there's some cold region of life as well because we can you please tell me that what is uh, the cold region of life and 
Um, also, how would you explain cold origin of life to someone who has no science background? Um, <clears throat> so, this is a kind of debate. I mean, there, there is a lot of different models for how life might have started, but um, in the kind of late 70s, early 80s, these um, hydrothermal vents were discovered at the bottom of the ocean, and a whole series of, of models started focusing on these vents as being the most likely site for the origin of life. Um, and so, I mean, to some extent, the cold model was sort of the antithesis of the hot model, right? And the hot, the hot models have a lot of things going for them, and they have a lot of things working against them, too. Um, you know, as, as much as anything, we just don't know the answers to these questions. We don't know. But there are a lot of things, very interesting things that can happen to chemicals if you freeze them, right? That they, as the ice forms, it'll actually exclude dissolved species. So you get these little pockets of super concentrated liquid interspersed in the ice, right? And you can see this if you, if you, um, you know, if you've ever made ice cubes out of juice or something, the, the top ends up being really sweet, right? And the bottom will end up being almost pure ice, right? <laughs> it's the same kind of effect. <clears throat> so, um, so that was part of the cold model, is, is trying to understand the behavior of chemicals at very low temperatures as opposed to the hot. And there's other, you know, other advantages to that, that um, we think that self-assembly of molecules is very important somehow in this. And it tends to be true that the sorts of weak forces that help things self-assemble are are more stable at low temperatures than at high temperatures. So it's it's easier for something to self-assemble if it's cold than if it's hot. So that's part. That makes, of it. It makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Okay. Last but not least, can you please tell me that how, from um, an astrobiological perspective. You know, how astrobiology can you contribute to answer the region of life question? <clears throat> well, um, so I think of the, the origin of life is a subset of the questions that bi astrobiology asks, right? But certainly, I think something we're getting back from exploring space is learning about what the surfaces of other planets are like and what other kinds of chemistry can be going on. Um, we're learning about I mean, it's, it's so difficult on Earth because Earth is so perfused with life that everywhere you look, there's traces of life, right? And when you go to a really non-living planet like Mars, I mean, we guess Mars, right? I haven't found any evidence of life yet. Um, it, it really causes you to look at how things interact with the environment in a different way, you know? So thinking about what the early Earth was like is, sometimes can be guided by this other exploring the solar system yeah yeah, yeah. i would say one, one more aspect of that is that if you want to look for life on another planet you you need to be able to tell what is a, a signal of non-living chemistry versus a signal of living chemistry right and that that forces you to ask some kind of interesting questions about yeah, what right. you think biology could be made out of yeah, that's right. Um, thank you so much. Dr. I'm glad we could find a time to connect. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. The time that we decided, so thank you so much for the work that you do, and we need more individuals like you to contribute, to answer such questions, and to find solutions to such, such mysteries. Because God knows that how many years that has been that we have been wondering about this question, and we, we are still wondering that what is the right answer, and what is the true answer for these items. Yeah, I hope more people will, will take up the mantle. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a, have a great evening. You too. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.